In order to experience and visit many places this popular country has to offer, you will probably need a car. Here is some basic introduction to driving in Italy and some pointers on how to avoid unnecessary fines. Like in most other countries, there are several different types of roads. First we have Autostrada, which is the Italian highway, which has a speed limit of 130 km per hour. These are tall roads, but more on that later. Second we have Strada Statale. These are often dual carriageways that resemble autostradas, but often do not have the emergency outer lanes and are not tall roads. Uh, the short for these is SS. And then we have Strada Regionale. These are regional roads that often have just a single lane in each direction. The short for these is SR. And we also have Strada Provinzionale. These are important from a touristy perspective because they can vary a lot. Here is an example I encountered while driving in Tuscany. This is SP40 and looks like a nice normal road. Now take a look at SP88. SP88 didn't even have asphalt on many parts and was way more narrow. Both are classified as Strada Provinzionale. In these cases, Google Maps is an incredibly useful tool. General speed limits are 130 km per hour on Autostrada, 90 to 110 km per hour on extra urban roads, and 50 km per hour on urban roads. When it comes to toll roads, they consist of an extensive network of highways called autostradas. This is a so-called closed system of toll roads and that means that you grab a ticket from a booth when entering the autostrada. When exiting, you stop at the toll booth where you enter the ticket into the machine and the machine will tell you how much you need to pay for the usage of the road you've been driving on. These toll booths accept almost all payment options except sexual favors. If you are paying with credit or debit card, just put it in the same slot where you previously inserted the ticket. If you are paying in cash, make sure to choose the appropriate lane when approaching the toll booths. Now you can put cash here and if you put in more than needed you will get your change back uh, via an automated tray. I have to mention that there are three autostradas that require payment via internet, app or telepass. These are the A36, A59 and A60. You can find more information on apl.pedemontana.com. You can calculate the tolls of your journey by using the route planner on autostrade.it. Here's an example. While we are still on the topic of Autostrada, you have to pay attention to the tutor system. The tutor system has the entry points where it registers your vehicle and the time of passing. Later, when you pass an exit point, your average speed will be calculated. And if it exceeds the speed limit, you will get one of those expensive postcards sent your way. This system is implemented on many parts of the main Autostradas. And please, for the love of God, do not think that just because you're driving on foreign place it will not be able to find your address. If you drive a rental car and receive any fine, you must keep in mind that the rental companies charge an additional handling fee. These can be in the ballpark of 50 euros. Additionally, there are classic speed cameras dotted around on all types of roads. Sometimes you can encounter signs that you are entering a part of the road that contains speed cameras. There are always signs on the cameras or, or in the close proximity of cameras. For example, like these. 
But here's the issue. As a foreigner, you have to adapt to the local driving culture. Driving culture in Italy is similar to most South European countries. And if you then take in consideration that cameras record speeds exceeding 5 km uh, per hour above speed limit and that the signs are often placed on the cameras themselves, fines are almost inevitable. There are a couple of things you could do in order to try to avoid these fines. First thing is to use Waze, which is a community-driven navigation app that will warn you ahead of upcoming speed cameras. When it comes to built-in sat-navs in cars, I have only encountered one that warned of speed cameras, and that was in an Alfa Romeo. But if you're driving an Alfa Romeo, speed cameras are the least of your problems. Actually, that is more of a concern for the tow truck driver. Second thing you can do is to prepare by using Google Maps Route Planner. Type in the route you are about to drive and Google Maps will point out where the speed cameras are positioned. You may also consider driving like a granny if there are many speed cameras on your route. Another thing to watch out for while driving in Italy are the dreaded ZTL zones. ZTL stands for Zona Traffico Limitato, which means that you have to have special permit in order to drive within these zones. These exist in all larger cities. Maps of ZTL zones you can find on various municipality websites. There is a plethora of variations on who and when can enter these zones. My advice is to try avoiding them altogether. There are ZTL signs before entry and after that there are cameras that record your vehicle and send you one of those expensive postcards. Especially egregious is the one of Firenze. If your hotel is within a ZTL zone, you have to contact the hotel and give them your license plate number so that it can be registered within the system. Electric cars are in most cases exempt, but you still have to register the license plate in the system. Last but not least, I would like to mention the topic of parking, or parcheggio, as the Italians would say. I have encountered many nice big modern underground parking facilities where the only negative is that they are pricey and sometimes full. On-street parking is not that expensive compared to the Nordic countries and they have a cool feature but no quirks and they are fully Italian, unlike this guy. You can tell by observing the color of the lines for whom the parking is meant and if it's paid or free. Blue lines signal that it is for everyone, but you have to pay. White lines signal that it's for everyone and free of charge. Yellow lines signal that they are for residents only. And pink lines signal that they are for pregnant women. A bonus tip is that diesel in Italian is called gasolio and should not be confused with benzina, which is regular petrol. If you found this somewhat helpful, please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing.